I'd now like to introduce our second presenter. Michael Edmonds is our General Manager, Central Marketing and Industry Insights. Michael's going to give us an overview of our work in market access and in growing demand domestically and globally for our product. Please join me in welcoming Michael. Good morning. Well, we all know there are a number of things in life that we can't control, don't we? And of course, on top of that list for primary producers is the weather. But today I'm going to talk to you about something that you can influence control over, and that's the marketing levy you pay, and through that, you influence the demand it creates for your product here in Australia and around the world. Your marketing levy is managed through an industry consultation process, and here's how it works. Under MLA's agreement with the Australian Government, we're required to consult, consult twice yearly with our producer peak councils, Cattle Council uh, of Australia, Alpha, Sheep Meat Council and Goat Industry Council. Now, MLA conducts marketing task forces in December and April with the peak councils in the industry, and we also uh, involve the processors and retailer representatives at that time too, to agree on plans on how to invest your marketing levies. Now, in addition to that, your peak councils have us update you, update them regularly on the progress of our programs and of course import, report back on performance as well. So it's through these interactions your producer peak councils help decide how your marketing dollars are invested and review the outcomes of that investment. So if you want to have a say in how your levy is allocated, speak to your state farming organisations or directly with the peak industry councils who have representatives on e all these groups that help make decisions. Okay, so that's how the money is invested. Let's talk now more about what impact it has. Make no mistake about it, your levy is a very powerful investment. It's through the collective investment of your levy that you're able to combine together to influence the demand for your product globally. And that collective uh, investment over time has helped create strong de demand in the global marketplace for Australian beef and lamb. But before I go on, I want to answer one burning question that you might have. If demand is so strong, why are we not seeing it flow through to increase livestock prices? Well, as you're probably aware, and it's been referred to earlier today, We've just witnessed two record years of supply in Australia. By the end of this year, 17 million head of cattle will have been killed, boxed and shipped in a 24-month period. Now, if we add to that a nearly 2 million head of live cattle that have been exported over the last two years, that's nearly 19 million head of cattle over the past two years turned off. And that's, not a, that's a number that we haven't seen since the beef slump of the 1970s. It really is huge numbers, isn't it? And the good news here, well, the good news is all that product has been sold. There is no glut. And the demand in the, in, around the world for our product is stronger than ever. So once supply tightens up, we can be confident that we'll see higher prices in the marketplace. Right, let's talk now about how your levy is put to use to create value for you. Um, as we've already heard, it's been a landmark year of progress for free trade agreements, with the government signing deals with Korea and Japan and in the final throes of a deal with China right now. So what is MLA's role in all of this? Well, our role, we would say, is to fashion the bullets for our peak councils and government to fire. MLA does a, a research, advocacy and market and we support the, peak, support the peak industry councils in the coordination of a consistent industry position. Now, it's this consistent industry position that has helped the beef and lamb sectors get a positive result in both the Korean and Japan FTAs this year. If we look to the Korean deal, it delivers better access and significant real benefits. Complete tariff elimination of the 40% beef tariff over 15 years and the 22.5% sheep meat tariff over 10 years. And offal processed and live tariffs eliminated over 15 years. 
If this deal hadn't been achieved, Australia would have lost revenue that, that amounted to $1.4 billion over 15 years, given the US advantage they have with their FTA agree agreement. And likewise, we look at the Japan agreement, it delivers significant benefits, reducing the 38.5% tariff and will improve export sales by $5.5 billion over 20 years. Now, of course, these deals were a collaborative effort amongst industry organisations and the government. And we're now focused, of course, on trying to help the government achieve a successful FTA agreement in terms of our own industry position. And we hope to hear some, some good news about that shortly. MLA and its predecessor company, AMLC, have been building a strong brand Australia reputation for Australian beef and lamb for many years. It's not something new and not something we've just started to do. Now, the best known examples of this that you'll probably be aware of are our Aussie beef branding in Japan and our Ho Cho Chung Jung Wu program in Korea. And we've also had strong campaigns in other markets too. Over the last 12 months, we've been working to harmonise our Brand Australia message. We conducted extensive research in a number of markets with consumers and customers um, to, to see just what's consistent. And the feedback indeed was very consistent. So we've bundled these up into a new brand message called True Aussie. So what is True Aussie? Well, True Aussie is a new way for us to build value for Australian red meat with a consistent message across all markets. From the research, True Aussie combines three very important truths and they all work together to create a unique position globally for our product. The first one of these is that Australia is the ideal home. There's no better place on earth to raise beef and lamb. And certainly when you talk to our customers around the world, they really do see that. The second is that we're trusted partners. Through our industry systems, we maintain the highest standards of food safety and, control, and quality control. And the third, we call pure enjoyment, healthy food from friendly people. People all around the world can enjoy Australian product uh, and they certainly look to, the, to our country and our people um, as uh, great producers of great product. So the program is all about creating global consistency in a world where consumers and customers are moving across boundaries. So we can raise the level of awareness and appreciation for our products amongst customers, retailers, food service companies and most importantly consumers. So we're doing this by developing a range of marketing materials and adapting them locally as needed. Simply put, we're talking about providing food without fear for our customers and over time achieving a price premium over competitors for the confidence and loyalty that our customers and consumers have. So what benefits does this program and MLA's generic marketing activity in overseas markets bring for the producer? That's an important question. Well, let's look at some recent examples of where Generic Brand Australia promotion has contributed to value growth. In the Korean market, we've achieved $191 million growth in beef sales uh, this, this, this calendar year versus last year. And that's despite the fact that, as many, you, as many of you know, we have an 8% tariff differential uh, disadvantage to the US because of their FTA agreement in place. So why have we been able to achieve this growth uh, when we've got such a disadvantage? Well, a big reason for this is the loyalty that the con Korean consumer has for Australian beef, driven by industry marketing programs led by M MLA. If we look at the US market, $390 million increase in beef sales in the last 12 months and $95 million increase in sales in lamb sale over the same period. Now look, clearly the US has a need for our grinding beef at the moment. But in addition, the growth in grass-fed beef continues to present an opportunity for Australian beef producers. MLA has supported a number of companies developing grass-fed beef business into the US. And of course, Cattle Council's past-fed cattle assurance system, or PCAS, taps into that opportunity as well. So through our business development and marketing, we help industry take advantage of these opportunities in the US. If we look across to the Middle East, $104 million in beef sales growth and $60 million in lamb sales growth over the last 12 months. 
again underpinned by activities right through the supply chain that build their confidence in our brand Australia. All activity led by MLA on behalf of Australian beef and lamb um, and, and goat producers, as well as industry, of course, as well. And China. We're going to hear a lot more about China in a minute from Andrew Simpson, who's our, our man on, on the ground over, over in uh, China and also Southeast Asia. But just to look at the numbers there, this year, $380 million in, in sales growth in beef and $97 million in lamb sales growth over the same period. Once again, delivered by Australian exporters and underpinned by industry marketing and business development to build trust in our product. I think I'd say that, look, if you did doubt the value that MLA provides in underpinning our industry position, then talk to one of our many customers in overseas markets who really will attest to this. Your levy investment goes a long way in creating long-term sustainable demand for Australian producers. Now let's talk about the home front. In the domestic market, it remains our largest market for Australian beef and sheep meat. And in many ways, the domestic market is our most competitive. We must not forget that we're amongst the highest consumers of red meat globally. And over time, consumer tastes have evolved. The weekly meal for the Australian consumer looks very different now to that of 20 years ago. And indeed, with the change in age and cultural heritage profile, the Australian consumer is very different as well today. So considering these demographic changes, our industry has been able to successfully maintain the position of red meat as a cornerstone of Australian diets. And indeed, consumption of beef and lamb has flattened out at the same time as price has grown dramatically with the growth of export demand. So our challenge is to build the position of beef and lamb to ensure that people continue to pay a premium over cheaper proteins. And you can see here, chicken is a cheaper protein. We all know that. And it hasn't increased in price at all, whereas beef and lamb have increased over the years. So our role in marketing is to influence the consumer, to educate them on the nutritional benefits of beef and lamb, and to get them to stay loyal to our great products. Over the past year, the domestic marketing team in MLA have been busy ensuring our consumers remain loyal to their beef and lamb. Comedian Merrick Rotz returned in the second instalment of our Throw Another Steak on the Barbie campaign this year, reminding consumers that steak is the rightful king of the barbecue. The campaign delivered results above MLA benchmarks for enjoyment and engagement. And this year we also introduced something new, the Beef Oracle. He was a standing rib roast that ab knows absolutely everything about beef. It was the first major MLA marketing campaign which we embarked upon without the use of TV. We used a number of other uh, means to communicate to consumers. I've got a little video here to show you that'll take you through the campaign and how it performed. Beef, it's the king of meats, the best source of iron and zinc in the Australian diet. How could this Australian hero ever lose favour with its fans? It did. In just 10 years, the unthinkable happened. Cheap and easy chicken had stolen sales from beef. Why? Confusion reigned. Australians had lost their confidence cooking beef, puzzled by all the different cuts. Research told us one in two of them would cook more beef if only they knew how. Why should the beef be browned before I add it to my casserole? When should I take out my rice? Who is Angus? Praise or casserole! We created a saviour to restore Australians' confidence and inspire them to cook more beef. Before the campaign launched, we created Intrigue. The beef oracle is coming. Leaving signs in beef heartland. From there, we announced the arrival of the Beef Oracle to the masses. Without further ado, the all-round authority on all things beef, the Beef Oracle! It was omnipresent in national outdoor, shopping centre panels and interactive recipe dispensers. A radio partnership with Nova FM. What should we have for dinner tonight? Don't know. We could always consult the Beef Oracle! I Hello. Oh, hi, it's... Christian Whipper. I know, I'm an oracle. On YouTube, as our audience searched for other life guidance. A guest appearance on taste.com.au. And even reminders at butchers and supermarkets. The Beef Oracle was everywhere. It even had its own website. 
Here, visitors could engage with a beef oracle and get expert one-on-one -on -one beef knowledge. A team of community managers ensured the beef oracle was a supreme fountain of beef information who could spread the word of beef through a live talkback radio show that people could call using a 1-800 number. Beef oracle. What do you think about people that prefer roast chicken over roast beef? An exclusive interview in MX Magazine and a large-scale activation in major shopping centres. Still, the Beef Oracle would not rest, even though it should. Continuing to reach people in unexpected places. Hello, young lady in aisle one. Entertaining people through social media. And who better to sell steak knives live on TV? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, to the Beef Oracle. Hello, Jono. This truly integrated and innovative campaign had the word of beef spread far and wide. The results spoke for themselves, reaching 80.2% of our target audience. 2.7 million people saw outdoor ads. The Cube activation reached 1.2 million people. 2.4 million online impressions. 92,011 visits to the website. Over 10,000 questions answered. And with this success, we were able to steal sales back off chicken. The Beef Oracle is currently enjoying a break with its good mate, the Dalai Lama. Stay tuned in 2015. This fountain of beef knowledge may well return. Now, over the last 12 months, we've placed a greater focus also on providing consumers with digital solutions to help improve their beef and lamb eating experience as well. Two great examples of this are the Steakmate and Cuts Chart apps that we launched this year. Now, we've got combined downloads in excess of 80,000 for both those apps, uh, which is a great achievement. And we're looking at developing more apps into the future. This year, our Australia Day campaign, again, was a great success, achieving strong sales growth. Um, this year had Sam encouraging the next generation of lamb eaters to become ambassadors for our product. We also had our Easy Lamb Roast campaign, which was in its second year, delivering strong sales result results for roasting cuts and registered excellent consumer responses as well. During the year, we actually appointed a new advertising ag agency for lamb as well, and we launched a new platform called You Never Lamb Alone, bringing to life the truth that people really bond over lamb. So let's have a look at the latest TV commercial we've come up for that campaign. Hi, uh, a dozen lamb cutlets and half a kilo of lamb mince, please. There you go. Thanks. We just launched that, that ad uh, last month and initial results show actually we've had an increase of 30% in our loin cut sales and 10% in uh, lamb mince uh, just in the last month. So uh, uh, it looks positive so far. So in addition to these campaigns this year, we embarked on a new and exciting project called uh, the Dinner Project. Now this is MLA's first foray into what's called the branded content space. Basically we made our own TV program. So airing on Sunday nights, 7pm on Fox's Lifestyle Food Channel, former MasterChef con con uh, contestant Hayden Quinn is on a six-episode mission to educate consumers on how to prepare healthy beef and lamb meals. Let's just have a look at the future outlook for demand. What does the landscape look like? Well, let me tell you here, we've got every reason to be positive. MLA recently conducted a five-year demand project and we modelled a range of factors that determine the likely demand for Australian beef and lamb through to 2020. Now, all the fundamentals we reviewed are positive. 
including exchange rate improvements, economic growth returning to the northern hemisphere, easing of key uh, Asian market tariffs that we obviously know about, and continued middle, growth, uh, middle class growth in China and Indonesia, as well as the Middle East. So some very strong fundamentals there. So in all the modelling we did, value growth for Australian beef is expected to be very strong in all our core markets, as you can see here in this chart. And likewise for lamb, it's a very similar story. Our core markets, again, showing significant value growth from this modelling. So given the demand for our product will be very strong, there's every reason for us to be optimistic. So of course the question uh, you should be asking, is your levy expenditure providing value for money? Well, you bet it is. You invest about 1% of the value of beef cattle and 2% of lamb into a levy, a portion of which goes into marketing your product in Australia and around the world. Benefits of your investment uh, that your investment has provided include contributing to the achievement of a favourable free trade agreement with Japan and Korea that will deliver significant benefits over the next 20 years, growth in both developing and mature markets, including our key markets of Korea, the US, China and the Middle East in the last 12 months, and domestic marketing programs that keep our most important consumers loyal to your product and prepared to pay a premium into the future. Make no mistake about it, your levy investment makes a difference. The challenge for producers we know is about improving profitability back to the farm gate though. And you as a producer and industry stakeholders can take great heart, heart that the outlook looks positive for the signs of continuing demand growth. And as Warren Buffett once said, buy commodities, sell brands. It's been working for Coca-Cola and Wrigley's chewing gum since the 1800s. And it's working today for our industry through continued consist consistent investment of your marketing levy to grow Australian beef and lamb sales around the world. <laughs>